last forever Take me back to when we were kids And they didn't care if we were acting stupid Cause all we had was us If I close my eyes and think about us I can see the person I know I should be Cause honestly I don't have no time to waste I'm trying to come back to you Because now I see We were meant to be Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> it's really great to be here with all of you today. And I'd just like to start off by, by welcoming you on behalf of, of James and Chanel. Um, just before we get, get into the formalities, um, James and Chanel just requested that you put your phones off for the service. There are photographers here, there's a videographer. And they've asked that you just be present in the moment with them. So instead of sitting behind a screen, just we witness to their marriage this afternoon. Put those things away, put them off. Um, let's just avoid any disturbances. And we just open with the word of prayer together. Lord God, we thank you that we can come before you this afternoon to celebrate this union. Lord, to celebrate the life that is to come in this marriage. And Father, from the get-go, we pray for your blessing over this union. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. 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 Someone's phone still isn't off. I heard you. I heard it. <laughs> Think I got a mic now? <laughs> you, uh, it's your grandnana. It? It's grandnana. Go help her. Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> As flat. As flat. There we go. All right. We are gathered here in the presence of God to witness the marriage of James Matthew Bull and Chanel Tamsin Oaks. From now on, I'll just call you James and Chanel. Perfect. All right. <laughs> to support them with our prayers and to share their joy. Marriage is given by God. It is not to be entered upon or thought of lightly or selfishly, but responsibly and in the love of God. According to the teaching of Christ, marriage is a lifelong union in body, mind and spirit of one man and one woman. It is his will that in marriage, the love of man and woman should be fulfilled in the wholeness of their life together, in mutual companionship, helpfulness and care. By the help of God, this love grows and deepens over the years. Such marriage is the foundation of true family life, and when blessed with the gift of children, is God's chosen way for the continuance of mankind and the bringing up of children in security and trust. The union of husband and wife is in scripture compared to the union of Christ and his church, for he loved the church and gave himself for it. James and Tamsin are now to marry each other and to seek God's blessing for their married life. If anyone knows of any reason why they may not lawfully marry, let him now declare it. <laughs> good. No, no. Fantastic. <laughs> James and Chanel. I require and charge you both in the presence of God and of this congregation that if either of you knows of anything to prevent you from being lawfully married, you do not confess it. Mm -mm. Nothing. No, Fantastic. No. <laughs> All right, James, if you'll repeat after me. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare. That I know not. That I know not. Of any lawful impediment. Of any lawful impediment. Why I, James Matthew Bull. Why I, James Matthew Bull, may not be joined in matrimony. May not be joined in matrimony. To Chanel Tamsin Oaks. To Chanel Tamsin Oaks. Chanel, if you'll repeat after me. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare. That I know not of any. That I know not of any. Lawful impediment. Lawful impediment. Why I, why Chanel Tamsin Oaks. Why I, Chanel Tamsin Oaks. May not be joined in matrimony. May not be joined in matrimony. To James Matthew Bull. To James Matthew Bull. Fantastic. Now we can, uh, we can actually get into the wedding stuff. <laughs> All right. Um, I'd like to ask if the couple's mothers would like to come up and light the unity candles. Thank you. Thank you. I promised um, that I wouldn't go on too long. I know there's something big happening later. <laughs> but in all seriousness, it is just such a blessing to be here with the two of you today. I think I started chatting to, to James and Chanel, when was it, in June? Yes. In June? Yes. Yeah, you guys were organized. You were more organized than a lot of couples that I've married. Um, so well done to you on that. Um, but I must say, when they first phoned me, I thought, where did they get my number? Who are they and why are they contacting me? This, this couple with James and his half English, half South African accent. Um, but I'm so glad that you did. And, and in our discussions, I've, I've just come to see how lovely you both, of, both of you are. Um, and this, this special relationship that you have with each Thank other. You. I mean, 12 years is, is not a short amount of time no. to have known each other. And I think 10 years together, yeah. correct? And I mean, two years engaged. If, that, if you can get through that, yeah. I think you're good to go. I heard a story about a boy who sat through Sunday school. And, and during Sunday school... Um, his teacher taught him about a few things, and I mean, you know how boys go, their focus comes and goes. 
And eventually he got home and, and his dad said to him, my boy, what did you learn today? He said, well, dad, they told us about a wedding and Jesus went to it. And Jesus turned water into wine. And his dad said, well, my boy, that's fantastic. But what, what message did you get out of it? He said, well, dad, if you want to have a good time, always invite Jesus to your wedding. <laughs> Our first reading today is taken from Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9 to 12. And we'll focus more specifically on verse 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either one of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and there's no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Another translation reads as follows in verse 12. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple-braided cord is not easily broken. Now, Ecclesiastes 9 verse, or sorry, 4, verse 9 to 12 isn't necessarily written about marriage or marriage alone, but it definitely fits our idea of marriage, what we see marriage as. And it ends with this, this wonderful wisdom saying, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And, and I can't help but notice how it goes two, 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 Three, and the similarity that I see in a marriage where we have two individuals journeying together and when we come into a marriage like the one today and we invite God into that marriage as the third strand in that covenantal relationship and that cord of three strands that will not break easily. Now everyone loves love. I think we want to be loved, we want to give love, but sometimes... Our love lacks a bit. And once you've been married, well, you may have experienced it already. But as you go forward, I'm sure some of you here will, will know, love can, can lack a lot. Um, it really can. And some of us are confused about love. As confused about love as, as five-year-old Kari, who when, when asked what love was, said it's when a man and a woman put on cologne and perfume and go out and smell each other. <laughs> If only love were that simple. That is a part of it. It really is an essential part of it. And don't let go of that. Don't lose that in your marriage. But it is so much more meaningful than just that. Our second scripture today is taken from John 15, verse 9 to 12. And it reads as follows. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. My, love is the, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. I want to break this up into three brief points this afternoon. The first of which is receiving God's love. And I think this is the easiest part. So Jesus knew that the time for Him to leave had come. He knew he didn't have much time left. And, and all he wanted to show to his disciples in the time he had left with them was how to receive the love of God, the love that you don't have to do anything for, the love that you can't run away from, the love that, that doesn't disappear if you say no to it, if you shout it at it. The love that is always there, and all we need to do is receive it. So Jesus says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Live within my love. I love you, he told them. And he loves you too. I read about a pastor who said that all you need to know about theology, or it can teach you more than a degree in theology, is a simple song. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I think it's a song that has become known all over the world for one simple profound truth. Jesus loves me. Receiving the love of Jesus and living in his love every day 
is the first step in having a love worth giving. The second part of this is to return this love. It's one thing to say Jesus loves me. It's easy to say that. It's another to say I love Jesus, I love God. And, and to know what it means to actually express that love. But if, for me, if, if we aren't able to love God in that way, someone without fault, someone who has never wronged us, if we can't love completely, love someone who's perfect completely, how do we ever love our partner completely? Someone who's by no means perfect. Mm. Because that's the reality. Mm. Is that in our marriages, in our lives, no human is perfect. Jesus said that the first and greatest command is this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. So how does returning God's love, I mean, what does it look like in practical ways? Well, I'd say it's not too different from any relationship where we have trust, communication, and adoration, which are three pillars of any relationship. And when we look at them in, our, in terms of God, it would be the equivalent of faith, prayer, and worship. Trust, communication, adoration. We need to learn to love Jesus completely. And maybe it means like when we first meet someone that we fall in love with. When you first meet that person in the first few months, whether you're going to bed, you're going to have breakfast, you're going out, whatever it is, you are thinking about that mm. person. It's an incredible feeling. The time of being in love, and it fades, it does. But it, it comes back, don't worry. <laughs> but to think of Jesus in that same way, mm. in our eating, in our sleeping, whatever it may be, to love completely. And it's in line with what Paul says in Romans 12, verse 2. Loving Jesus means to take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. And the third and most important point for me today is to recycle this love. I know I sound like an environmentalist, the reduce, reuse, recycle. But to recycle this love, and I think for many of us it's the hardest part. As I've mentioned, things in our relationships aren't always perfect. Our spouses aren't always perfect. Mm -hmm. Things can get hard. Things can get ugly. There'll be nights where you go to sleep and you don't want to speak to each other. Mm -hmm. You want to just turn your back to the other person and say, you know what, just, just leave me alone. We know what we should be doing. We know how we should address the thing before we go to bed, but we don't. And that's why for me this is the hardest part. Because, I mean, I don't know what sports do you play. Do you play any sports? Anything. What do you do for Everything. fun? You want to go out with the boys? Everything. Fishing. Yeah, fishing. fishing. You want to go fishing with the boys? Fantastic. <laughs> you ask your wife? <laughs> Not this weekend. <laughs> okay. Then your wife asks you to make her a cup of tea. <laughs> Not this weekend. <laughs> you see, it, it can become tricky to love each other in our relationship, to constantly show that love that we have for each other, to work beyond what we may be feeling in the present time, in the present moment. And to show the love we felt when we started dating. Mm. The love you may be feeling on your wedding day. And for me, it's only once we've received God's love into our lives and returned it to God that we're able to recycle this love. We're able to take this love and to love each other completely with it. To love each other with our flaws, for our flaws mm. and imperfections to look beyond them and to know the heart of the person yeah. in the relationship. To know that when you ask something and you get a blunt response, mm. it's not a sign of your partner not loving you. But in our love to them, we see through it. Mm. The definition of love we find in scripture shatters anything else we may have experienced in life. 
love that we'd see a man get on his hands and feet and wash, sorry, get, get on his hands and knees and wash his disciples' feet. Mm. A love that we'd see one willing to die for others. And this is the type of love we try to achieve in this cord of three strands. Mm. This cord that is not easily broken where we have James, Chanel and God. And this love that moves. This love we learn from and learn to replicate in our lives. Let us pray. Lord God, I pray that we may be able to begin to understand this love that comes from you. And Lord, I pray that this would be a love that could be replicated in this marriage. Lord, that, that James and Chanel would know your love and would love each other with this perfect love, with this love that goes beyond what we may expect. Lord, a love that forgives, a love that understands and supports. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. 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 Still okay? Okay, cool. Just checking. I need to make sure. Just need to find my place, my book of blue. Oh, there we go. There we go. So, we are there. All right. O oh God, as you have brought James and Chanel together in love and trust, enable them through the power of your Holy Spirit to make and keep their vows through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. James, will you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife, to live together according to the holy law of God and the holy state of marriage? Will you love her, honor and keep her, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her so long as you both shall live? I will. No. Will you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband, to live together according to the law of God in the holy state of marriage? Will you love him, honor him, and keep him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? Well. <laughs> Someone got a tissue. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the I will you want to hear. <laughs> All right. Good. James, if you'll repeat after me. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I. To witness that I, James Bull. There we go. To take thee. To do, do take thee, Chanel Oaks. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. To, to have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And to this I pledge myself. And to this I pledge myself. Now if you'll repeat after me. Yeah. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I. To witness that I, Chanel Oaks. Do take thee. Do take thee, James Bull. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's, God's holy law. And to this I pledge myself. And to this I pledge myself. Can I ask for the rings, please, Tana? Just pop them in the book there. Thank you. 
Oh. <laughs> Would you two like to face each other? Yes. Do you take this put it Fantastic. In <laughs> almost lost one. I didn't. Do you need this again? But I almost lost it. Let's <laughs> pray. Bless, Lord, the giving of these rings, that they who wear them may be ever faithful to one another and continue together in love as long as they both shall live. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you two like to take these rings? You can put them on each other's fingers. <laughs> okay, if you'll just hold, hold hands and repeat after me. With these rings, with with these these rings, rings we pledge ourselves to each other. We pledge ourselves to each other. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And, and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. James and Chanel have made their covenant before God in this company. They have made their vows to each other and shown their consent by the joining of hands and giving of and receiving of rings. I therefore pronounce them husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no man put asunder. James, would you like to kiss your wife? Please. <laughs> <laughs>